Welcome to another Arius Wave market update. So we're going to start with the Dow Jones today, having a look at the pattern that's happened recently in the drop with the scare of the CPI print uh, last week. And as I've mentioned before in my This Changes Everything video, which I'll link below again, uh, we cannot go below this red line down here, which is the beginning of wave one of the coming wave three. Okay, so even though once March 2020 happened, we did have an A, B, C, D, E pattern, which was an expanded correction that went to the upside, right? So that was the whole correction for wave two. Pretty expanded, right? So that shows a lot of strength in the market, but I think it's only a taste of what's to come. Now, in the This Changes Everything video, I will explain to you what, what this March 2020 wave means. So if you haven't seen that video, please go check it out. Uh, it'll probably blow your mind as to what's coming ahead. So the reason why I'm not even phased by any of these crypto corrections recently is because of basically this this setup that we have going on here. Now, even though wave two was expanded to the upside, right, for the first wave and the second wave, well, the first and second for wave three, well, it seems to have a larger retracement. Now, <clears throat> you could come up with a whole bunch of reasons as to why that's happening, but there's also a, a midway point resistance area in this line that could be the culprit. However, I also think there's other factors going on, especially when you think about the things that have been going on in the world since basically around, you know, the start of 2021, even up until, you know, the start of 2022. So, you know, you had about a year for this move to go up for wave one in a, type one week five wave move manner. Okay, so the only way that you can explain this move is that the waves are moving up in three waves. You can see the first zigzag there. All right, the second zigzag there. And then the, th the, the third zigzag there. Each, uh, like waves two and four, uh, alternation is there. Little mini corrections. One was very short and shallow. The other one was, you know, a bit longer and deeper. But that marked the top of the first wave of the coming third of a third wave. Okay, so the way that I label this chart at the present day is basically we have an A, a B, a C, a D, and an E, right? Which is why You've seen the E wave recently go down below the end of the C wave, but it doesn't make a difference as long as it doesn't go below the red line at the bottom here, which is around 20, 29,671, right? If that manages to go down below that line, then this analysis is wrong, but I highly doubt that that's the case just given this particular wave structure. If it was to be the start of something more severe to the downside, I would expect that this would be at least some kind of five wave move beginning of a trend. Now, so far we have not seen that. So I'm basically telling you that if this is correct, this is a good place to go long. If, if you know, if you happen to be one of those futures traders where they need to put a stop somewhere, you'd put it down here uh, at 29,671 on the US 30 chart, right? So in saying that, we'd need to see a break above the magenta line, which is where wave E started. So that area is around 33,513. Not saying you can't get in early, but just remember, I am not a financial advisor. So you do whatever you want to do based on your own research. But I do believe that this 
will then start the next leg up that will take us much higher, much, much higher in a parabolic manner, right? And if it's not extremely parabolic, well, it's still going to be pretty big, right? So my target for this is around 130,000 roughly on the Dow Jones. This is the type of move that we're looking for to end this cycle. Okay, so I understand interest rates are moving up. I, I totally get that. But it's got nothing to do with this pattern. So if you want to understand what that midway point is of that, you know, what I showed you that we had some resistance at the first green wave one. Well, the way that I measure this is I take the beginning of a wave, which is the 1987 crash. And I draw a parallel line to the end of wave E, which was uh, the March 2020 crash, the low of that, right? So if you watch that video down that I'll link, that explains that this was the end of the correction. It was a 20 year correction from 2000 to 2020. After that, we need to see the similar length of the A wave here. We need to see that similar length go all the way up to 133 or 130,000. Okay, we have not seen that completed yet. This is coming. After this completes, sure, then we can expect a pretty drastic pullback, a, a recession or a depression, whatever you want to call it but I don't see a recession yet, right? With all the FUD going on in the media, I keep stressing to people that this is just a ploy to get you to sell so they can buy, right? Liquidity, there's a buyer for each seller. So right now, the thing to keep an eye on is a break of that magenta line without going below 29,671. This is key. This is the key component here, right? This is why if you look at my latest XLM um, analysis, you'll see a very similar type pattern at the lows. We had a D and an E, right? If we break above 15 cents roughly, then you can expect to see a continuation of this trend to the upside that will become more impulsive as time goes on. Let's take a look at the 10 year yields, right? Now I've been waiting a little while to post this update on the 10 year yields because I wanted to see a break above the, uh, the end of wave four of the previous move down, which started in 1981. Okay. So for this, I'm going to turn off log, the log scale. So I can give you a quick look at what that means. Might use the weekly chart. Okay, so what is this pattern since the highs? It's a D wave. Okay, it's a D wave. You have your A in brackets. You have your A, B, C, D, E for B. And then you have a type one weak five wave move. One, two, three, four, five. That completes wave C in brackets for wave D. We are now looking for a sharp five wave move to the upside. Interest rates are going to go through the roof. Okay. So if you think that that's bad for stocks, think again. It's not the first time that the stock market has gone up during a period of high interest rates. And to prove that to you, all you got to do, you can't see it on this chart, but the we had basically almost 0% interest rates in 1941, right? So go find that chart. It's, I believe it's on my website. You can have a look there. In 1941, we had record low interest rates, right? Now, if you want to compare that to back from 1941 area to 1981, the market went up during that time. Okay, so higher interest rates does not mean stock market crash, right? Now, there are probably other dynamics at play 
that could be the cause for this. So that's probably a video for another day. But in saying that, it probably has a lot to do with the money supply that's been inflated, especially around, you know, 2020. And basically, if the velocity of the money picks up, chasing more money, chasing less goods and services, then chances are that we're going to see a massive rally, right? Because when all that money comes out, from hiding, it's going to go where? Probably into the stock market in cryptos, right? Especially because when it comes to high interest rates, that's not good for real estate. But real estate is only one sector of the market. So there are other sectors that could be the reason for this to outperform as well as continued stimulus of the economy. Now, a lot of people say there's a lot of QT happening, quantitative tightening, but let's just see how that plays out, right? The Fed might chicken out from the tightening for now until things get really bad, until we start to see massive inflation, right? To the point where it drives this up to a massive top and then I can see nothing but trouble. A nice big correction for wave E which would complete a wave two. And then after that, we would probably see an even bigger, massive bull trend. So you have the ability right now to stock up, to make some bank on the way up to this target. Once you get there, you should probably pull it out, put it where it's safe, right? Um, and then wait for that to happen and then get right back in, okay? This is probably something that the big banks and the elites have been doing for centuries. And it's my goal to try and get the everyday person to understand how this works and how they use your fear to get greedy. And then their greed ends up causing issues for the middle class and other people. So a bit of an in-depth thought experiment there for you if you if you like to think about that sort of thing we can see that the 10 year is exploding to the upside at this point in time okay so it has broken <clears throat> that previous wave four in an impulsive manner as i've been telling you since way down here if you go back from my videos i've been telling you this is it since around this area and around this area, we've just seen this thing go skyrocketing higher. So I don't know how much more evidence you need as to how important Arius wave is, but sooner or later, you will realize the importance of this methodology. So that there is critical. Now, going to the Euro, there's only one problem with the euro that I can see that still hasn't happened, but it's very close, is that this particular pattern hasn't made a new, a new low yet from the 2016 B wave, uh, which should actually be in orange. As you know, I color code my waves for ease of teaching people this stuff. So initially, I thought that this could have been uh, a larger part of a larger uh, corrective process. Uh, this being like an uh, an A uh, and then a B C D E, but instead I'm now taking the view that this is a A in brackets A B C D E, which means technically all we need to do is break that green line before we see. Wave C start to the upside, which to me would be bullish like crazy. Bullish for everything except the US dollar. Okay, so I had that one up my sleeve in case I found the, the one thing that is basically the difference between a bear market and an absolutely massive rally. 
And I figured that that was the key component as to how to distinguish between the both. Now, the C wave doesn't necessarily have to be as long as the A wave, as long as it makes the final low out of the previous uh, waves, right? So we're very close to that now. All it takes is another drop down. If you look closely what's happening at that bottom end, you can see that that final drop looks to be underway. As soon as it basically dips down a little bit more, we could see a massive reversal to the upside, which would take stocks and cryptos to the moon, basically. All right? I don't really like using that term, the moon, but it's going to go pretty high. Now, we're going to use these charts to uh, cross-reference and use for confluence along the way so that we can be ready for not only you know, observing the beginning of the trend, during the trend, the strongest part. And then finally, when we hit that top, we want to have every single chart at our disposal to confirm the price action as it occurs, right? So the weakness that we've seen recently in Bitcoin, right, can only be uh, explained in that Altcoins, they started correcting in May last year, whereas Bitcoin only started to correct at the end of last year. So they needed to probably run a little bit lower before uh, they were done correcting, depending on how you want to observe these patterns, right? Um, you know, there's times where these sorts of things can happen. For example, when you break out of a, you know, the the uh, the E wave, you know, correction, you know, the the start of E wave, you you come up, you break through it, and then you come back and you retest. Okay, retesting of a previous high, it's when be, it's it's when uh, resistance becomes support, and then you know you can see a, a reversal taking place. So yes, that means that Bitcoin is also going to pump. It's going to see a massive, massive pump to the upside. Okay, so a third of a third pump to the upside. There is no telling how high this will go. There is no way to measure this sort of thing apart from keeping an eye on all of the charts as they progress. Okay, so... I'm going to leave it there for now. This has been a very sort of important update just to show you that, you know, all the FUD, all the fear that you see in the media, it's all BS. Don't pay attention to it. Trust me, if the market was going to fall, these big bankers would not be your friend. They would not be warning you of impending doom. They are most likely just trying to get you psyched out of the market so they can buy whatever you have. And when I mean buy, they will buy big. So keep your assets safe and prepare for the next move up. Remember the confirmation points as I've indicated in this chart. And I will be providing you with frequent updates over the coming months and years ahead. So hopefully you found this video interesting and informative. Thank you for watching.